Tonight on Furniture Film Classics, Burt Lancaster. <laughs> I tell you all, my friends, bring me your dry goods, your millet, your flour, your bags of bulgur, your wheat, your garbanzos. Bring them all to me. Fill me up with your wares. I have room for them, my friends. <laughs> In Elmer Pantry. <laughs> Welcome to our nightmare. Or as it's called, Furniture to Go. Today, part two of the Hoosier Show. Remember last time? Do you remember last time? Do you remember this? We bought this piece at an auction. We brought it back. We stripped it. We sealed it. We sanded it. We bought a dinner. And now we're ready to prime. So we're going to take a door off. Uh. And we're going to use an oil primer because you don't want to raise the grain of the clean wood. I got a bristle brush. And I got a roller. I got an oil-based primer here. And we're going to do this like an assembly line. Yeah, I'm priming. See? And then I shall roll. I'm going to prime all around the edges in here. Now, why do you prime? Well, you prime to seal the wood, right? I wasn't asking. It was a rhetorical question oh, okay. to them, to them. You want to seal the wood, and you also want a nice white base for whatever color you want to you want to put on next. Priming is important. If you leave out the primer step, you're going to need more coats of paint. Lots of coats of paint. So put on the primer coat because it's going to help you. Now, so when here, this is dry, give it to you like a pie. Oh God! And now. Wait, let me get this one spot right there. Now you can go. Thank you. Get, Thank get some you. paint on there. Dip it all the way in there. All the way in what there. What are you there talking you about? There you go. And there then you, you have to go like now, this. Roll it in the center. Yo, there. yeah? Yeah. Oh, really? And then. There you go. There I go. Now you hey, go. Now hey, you, you take now, this one. Now, you when do this, this is dry, one. we'll be able to apply our new oil paint. But we've got no oil, new oil paint, so we want to go and get some. We need to match it with the original mint green color. Yes, we're going to a place where you can computer match a paint. Yeah, that's you used to use that. You used it one time, didn't you, computer matching? Well, they maxed me up with a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. Who's... I wonder where Gary is. He's supposed to help us. Wait a minute. What? Gary? Hey, oh, guys, how are you? Lost in thought? What, what are you think? thinking about? Yeah, which one is a roller and which one is a brush? Uh, oh, man, you're in the wrong now. business. How are you? Okay, Good how you doing, see. Gary? Gary What's Steinberg of Beauty Paint? Listen, today. Listen, I got a chip on my shoulder. Oh, the horror. I put, the horror. It, I put it on this masking tape. This is a little piece of paint okay. from the uh, Hoosier that we're you know, doing. Hoosier, little Hoosier. Hey, Jerry Lewis. Yeah, this is the kitchen item. And we have to match this color. So you have the computer. Hey, we can do that. Can you do that for us? You can do that? Follow me. With that thing. Good, finally. What do we got here, Gary? Well, what we have here is a color computer. It says ColorGen. That is the manufacturer of the color <laughs> computer who also does the software for us. Uh, this machine is known as a spectrophotometer, and that's going to tell us what colors we have to put into our base to mm -hmm. get the lovely Hoosier green that you've so judiciously I'm confused. anticipated. Do you follow? Oh, I follow you. It's not following me. I'll be arrested. <laughs> ah, anyway, so put we're going to put there. this in this uh, port, which hopefully paint side down, and we're going to go to a color formulation. Do that. Okay. Start the color formulation. You guys are known name. as the F guys. Right. And remarks. Well, that was the remarks are you are both ugly. And what's the other one? Stupid. Line? Stupid. Thank you. I knew there was something. Okay. So we're going to say that information is correct, and we can start. Now, you wanted this in a interior, interior alcohol. Alcohol. you want that nice soft gloss but something hard and durable Seven okay grand. so let's soft do that and, and we're gonna let the computer select uh, what kind of base it wants to use and that information again is correct and we're gonna measure the sample we've put the chip in the port and we're gonna measure, measure the sample. sample it checks and twice clicking yes Izzy is inside Reading that color. Little right man, now. one big eye. Exactly. It's like my uncle. Now let's begin and the formulation. Good. This is going to go through all Whoa. the colorants Look at all and the different figure out what is needed. That's how fast I can read. That I'm is. reading every one like uh -huh. Spock. Good formulas. It's got 18. There it is. And Whoa. there we go. And yellow oxide, yellow oxide right. palo green, and Van Dyke brown. All in a mid tone base. Let's get a label in the back and we'll go mix it up. Okay, let's do. Okay, okay, we're going to take this uh, printout that we got off the computer. And there's the magic colors sticks. The magic color sticks. That to we the adjust right them to the right, right dispensing oh, increment, and, and we and we push a fire button. away. And this it just goes right into the powers the, the colorant right into the can. It still looks white to me. Sooner or later. There hey, there go. it goes. And that's going to make the green 
That's going to make the green. Oh, That's going to make the green. That I know button. it, but I'll say I don't believe We it. need a lid I before we shake. Okay, let's seal it up and agitate the paint. I had an uncle who got rid of his head and put his head in there. I wish I could yeah. put you in there. I put your neck right in there. I break your face off like and put this. it right in there. Just like they do to With a chicken One big head. eye like this. So we've computer matched the mint green. What was wrong with that guy's hair anyway? <laughs> he scooted off on one leg too, just like the green. And the ivory white. We got the ivory white too. But now, before we paint, and we're going to be enameling, we need to sand the primer. We're using a 220 garnet paper if you live in Philadelphia. Fold it thrice as we often do. You need the surface very smooth in order for the enameling to flow out nice and even. What's nicer than a nice flowed out enamel? We'll be painting in a minute or so. So don't move. Well, you can twitch, but not a big, a big Barishnikov. Now we're painting. Yeah, well, we sanded and now we tack ragged everything with right. the sticky tack rag. And when you do enamel, you probably have to apply two coats. Yeah, don't even think about trying to uh, cover in one coat. You're always going to have to apply two. I'm using a roller and Joe's using a brush. I have a, a nice inch and a quarter angled brush and a two inch and Chinese bristle brush. We're applying the ivory to the parts that are ivory and the green to the parts that are. Guess what? Yeah, that are going to be green. Now, yeah. the inside of the door here is going to be ivory, and the frame is going to be green. So Don't. I'm going to use the ivory and do the inside of the door. Don't and apply too much paint. You're going to get drips. And don't even worry about how good it's going to look after just one coat. You'll probably have to do two coats. I just said that, bud. Well, I'm here, too, and I like a line now and then. Oh, OK. <laughs> And we've taken the doors off, as you should do. Does yeah. anybody remember as you should do? Yeah, we thought it was going to sweep the country, but now see, see if you can guess what the new one is. That ain't right. That's right. That ain't right. And lay them flat, the doors, that is, can or I, on a slight angle like that. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm pushing I don't, I'm rolling. slow motion. Push the brush down. The edge goes into the crack of the door here. See that? Right to the edge of the molding. And pull up. I will. Now apply the green with the trained eye, the mighty green with the mighty paintbrush. I was never a member of any political organization. Now we take this. See now I got to stand this up because I need. You ready? But the hand isn't on the hip. Well, that's How about mine? No, that's because okay. I have to hold the door. Now watch. See, you're shortening up your brush. Now, why wouldn't you ordinarily just well, use a smaller brush? The idea is to get the edge of the bristles right here. But why wouldn't? Because you can control this brush a lot better because the handle is a lot more comfortable. So in other words, you're making two brushes out of one, a little skinny brush to go into the channel. And you get the paint right on the edge, tap off this side. You want the one side loaded. So I know I do. When I drank, I like to have both sides loaded mm -hmm. myself. Watch the paint. This is good. This is good for sash work. This kind of uh, technique. Am I and right? Just as in clicking a picture, you know, we with the camera, you must take a breath. We spent the summer painting sashes. He and I. Boy, was that fun. When was that? Yeah, remember we painted that house. I remember painting the house. You with the rap music all day. See now. Anytime I see a paint job going on and they have things like this taped out, I say, they ain't painters. <laughs> but he digresses. They're kids. They're just kids. If you got a tape, you can't handle a brush. I've got that edge cut in. Now I'll just do this edge. Just with the brush like this here. While he's been doing this, I put on six more coats. <laughs> now you can remove the wood and the paint will stand by mm -hmm. itself. Are you spinning it? Yeah. Well, Don't doing... do it that way at home, please, folks. Just put it down and you move around. He likes to do this because, I don't know, send in your cards and letters. Because I spent many years doing this alone. Yeah, and now, now he I can wants to show some... you. Yeah. 
So I like to show off a little bit. Yeah, well, don't show them everything you do alone or they'll close us down. Now, your hardware's been sitting in the can for years. I know mine has. You know, and if we don't put the latches back on the Hoosier, you'd have to press your lips against the door and suck them open, and that violates at least three federal statutes. Now, let's just look in the can here and see what's happened. Right in here, I'm going to fish around. Uh-oh. Make sure you wear rubber gloves. Here's a latch. There's and a latch. Absolutely all of the paint has Use been Use gloves off. when you do see that. See that? Now, we lay these out on some paper towels. And, and scrub them. Is there another you got a piece wire brush. Yeah. And when you get them all cleaned off, you simply spray them with a spray primer. Let them dry and then spray on your paint. Now, remember that two or three light coats are better than one heavy coat. Or a vest. Yes. Now. And, and remember to wear a, spray, a mask with, with any kind of spray because of all the harmful chemicals. Do as we say, to shake not as we do. Like this here. Now, it's spray in the primer over here. Stay on your side. Oh, OK, I'm This sorry. is the color we've picked. It's kind of an ivory. Uh, I'm going to spray and dust lightly, gently. And, and if you want to turn it over and not get the fingers this color at a primer, you use one it of is. these. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? Now let this dry, and then we'll put on a second coat, a third coat, depending on if it needs it. When that first coat is dry... Just like here. Yes, yeah, and with the 400 paper. Very few people know that I am actually a policeman in Dusseldorf. Or I just got back from Mecca. The Fez is a very nice Fez. <laughs> One of the merry chapeaus you can make with a paint bucket. Clean and tack rag, and then this you can is, put on the second coat. This is the tack rag. It's a sticky rag. And now you're going to put on the second coat. Am I on, right? That's You are right, sir. Okay. Or you are right, sir. Let us begin. First the inside. Remember. Dab in corners. It's just to play. Why don't you do this like Howard Cosell? No, I don't do him. It's too easy. I always try and do somebody outside of my gene pool. Oh, yeah. It's a little... That's why it never little works. little rule I have. I'll do an Argentine, an Inuit. A Nitwit? You do him very well. Thanks, Joe. Soon it'll be my show uh -huh. after you start your car tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Right after dinner tonight, it will be my show. <laughs> Remember, John Candy first, then Ed Feldman. OK, it's mean furniture. The finisher makes his return. I'm oh. watching him paint. Now, if you want to run to the kitchen and get a snack, I'm going to be doing the green. Ooh, look, it's the last, the it, penultimate frame molding. long thing. Molding. You called it a frame before it, when I called it a molding. It's an OG edge is what uh -huh. it is. OG. OG. That's why, because when you got to paint these, you just say, oh, gee. Oh, boy. There's That's so, good. Thank God the Emmys are coming up soon. There's you know? so many of them. Oh, everything that comes out of your mouth is it's a jewel. Pearls. Is a jewel, yeah. Who are you calling a jewel? You swine. <laughs> I'm going to throw pearls before you. You're a swine. You are a swine. Lennon, you're a swine. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that Hoosier, then? That's me grandfather's Hoosier. That's not your grandfather's Hoosier. And look, here we have the finished one. If you don't want to keep watching him... Watch it... him lift the door like Vanna. Thank you very much. Look, as my hands play across the front, just as if it were an Oldsmobile. We have the lovely ivory latches and hinges, the green perimeter, and the ivory. The only thing that's left is stenciling. say this here Hoosier, I'd reckon, is uh, ready to be countrified. I'm fixing to commence the siphon. Right. So we've asked expert stenciler Margot Stitz from Stenciled Interiors. She's in Hocassin, Delaware. Hi, Margot. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for, for being here. Thanks sure. for having me. Sure. Okay. And you've done this door and the door down below, right. and you're going to do this one right here for us. Boy, what a big difference it makes, I'm telling you. What kind of brushes are you using today? These are natural bristle brushes made out of hog's hair. Mm-hmm. 
And the paints? The paints, the paints are, are acrylic paint. Acrylic base. Okay. We have evergreen, yellow ochre, and coral rose. That's mm -hmm. my favorite. It reminds me of my Aunt B's lipstick. Uh-huh, Aunt B. Uh, she always called me doll. <laughs> <laughs> she used to make the chicken down uh -huh. for uh, Andy of Mayberry. And there are the stencils that you have already prepared. Could you buy these uh, at your store, for example? Maybe? Yes, you can. They're also available at some craft stores. Okay. So do you do also custom stencils? And... We do. We do okay. custom stenciling also. Great. Great. So how would you start on a door such as this? All right. I've measured the door to see how the stencil will fit mm -hmm. when it's finished. Right. A stencil is cut out of mylar, and this is a two-part stencil. The first part is the flowers. Okay. And we you just got some masking tape hold it into there. place. Correct. We hold it into place with masking tape. Great. Right. Yeah. Now we're ready to begin. So you take the brush. The brush. With the salmon color. We or the dip rose. it into the paint. And we work it into the bristles of the brush. And so you're, you're kind of blotting it at the same time. And your see. palette is... And then we blot... Ah, of course you don't want drips. That's right. And the palette is just a paper towel. That's right. That's all. Because this is a semi-gloss surface, I'm going to use a tapping motion to deposit the paint onto and the furniture. these paints and the brushes, what, what would that cost you to buy? Um, your paints run about... $1.50 to $2. Oh, that's not Brushes much. run from two ninety up to about $7. And could you just do this with a lot of spray paint, too? <laughs> spray paint ten, you, tends to come out a little hard. He's and just it, asking for an easier way. Then. And it, it bounces behind the plastic and makes a mess. Oh, yeah, okay. you don't want that. And, and spray paint could also eat the mylar if it's lacquer-based. Now we're ready for the next color. The same process. The little brush because there's less yellow. That's right. Than green or coral rose. And the same motion. Oh, that's beautiful. Huh. A circular motion always, right? Yes. Circle, circles and dabbing. Circles and dabbing. Always remember that. Circles and They played Sullivan, too. Circles and dabbing? Yeah, yeah they, they were a ventriloquist act. No, it was beagles, a beagle act. Okay. And when you get done there, maybe you can take that off and we'll see the exact process. And, whoa, exact look process. at that. It looks gorgeous. Beautiful. And now you'll do the other one with the... Uh, with That's, the little leaves behind Now we'll it. do overlay two. That's the two-parter. It lines up with these black register marks uh -huh. in the proper place. And you don't have to wait for that stuff to dry? You can go because right Because it's it. acrylic paint, it dries almost instantly. Okay. Now the we're... wonders of what a world we live in. That's yes, all I can the say. modern age, the atomic age. And it's the same motion. And a dabbing and a dabbing. Well, Margo, th this is great, and we really want to thank you for being here, but unfortunately, you know, we can't pay any of our guests. Yeah, we got a, a budget. It's a low budget. Well, thank you very much for having me. I do love your shirt. Oh, well, we could get you one just like this. Well, I'd like that one. She this one? That one? Yes, please. That one she wants. This one? All go right. change. I'm going to go change. You'll get this one. I'll run it through the washer a few dozen times. Go ahead. And then I'll, in the next segment, I'll have my old clothes Don't wash on. it so much that we can Ah, the magic of television. Goodbye. Wait, I'm, I'm going this way. Thank you, Margo. The saggy chair bottom, unsightly, uncomfortable, and embarrassing to your guests and the odd night intruder. Now, it's not because the springs are broken, but the springs are fatigued, and aren't we all? Especially zigzags, which you don't want to replace because, well, you don't have to. So, you want to get rid of this slight puckering that's making the sag and everybody's giving a geschrei at you. So you turn the chair over and you will remove the cambric, which I've already done because who wants me to take any more cambric off on TV anyway? And you will see that the zigzag springs have a gap in between them and the decking, which is here, and it's made out of burlap, and that's what holds the stuffing in there. So you measure that and you see that it's this many. And so now you go and you buy foam. Once more into the breach with foam, dear friends. After you've measured, you add a half an inch and you go buy some foam. I bought some foam. Where do you buy foam? Uh, stores like Foam Kingdom, Kingdom of Foam, Foam Galaxy, Galaxy of Foam, Home of Foam, Foam Home. You buy the foam, you get the foam home, and you get your two inch thick slab. Now, how do you cut it? with that most lonely and neglected of all kitchen appliances. Wait a minute. And that's all there is to it. Now, let's look at two hours of film from my trip to Westphalia, where the people are simple. Give me that. I already had this piece cut to the size of the chair. How do you get this big hunk <laughs> in between the springs and the stuffing? Well, we'll have to cut it in strips. Oof. 
And as you can see, what a lovely cut it makes. I cut one piece, now I cut one more piece, and yet one more piece. Mm. See that little piece that cut there? Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight because you're nesting these against each other. So even if you don't have an electric carving knife and you have to cut it with a, a scissors and it gets jagged, just line them up in the same order in which you cut it. Now, how are you going to get this in? Sideways? Don't be silly. You just start pushing it in like this. They call it a quick fix. That's what it is. I'm telling you, make sure it goes to the tops of all the springs. And then we put the next one in like this. Oh my gosh, it's so good. You know, even if, even if these pieces of foam were in little itty bits, it wouldn't matter because it's really going to raise the decking up. Oh, ich hab nicht kein Koyach anymore. Yes, it's, it's Yiddish furniture repair. Let me just put it in there. Uh, 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 and there you have it. Now, you will turn this over, and aside from the faint smell of cloves and pineapple, puckers are all gone. Our Hoosier is all finished, and now Ed's coming over. Hey, Ed. Hey, look, look. I got foam left over. Here, have a piece. <laughs> This is nice. This is a beautiful end product. Remember what it looked like when we bought it? Oh, we spent at least 100 on it, and, and now, now we, we can sell give it. it away. We could sell it for at least that much. Let's look at the after. There it is. The before and, oh. Look, the pretty stencils, the pretty new color. You can't tell one is the same. So until that time that we meet again. I'm Joe Lorario. And I'm Ed Feldman. Be nice. To your furniture, please. But now, now we can distress this. this thing.